At this stage, I'd love to board a working Taiwanese longliner to see what they make of the murder videos. But they rarely come in to Port Victoria, and they're not exactly keen to talk. Instead, I've been invited onto a local longliner. It's smaller than the Taiwanese ships, How's it going, gentlemen? Good. but catches fish in the same way. Captain, how are you? Okay, fine, thank you. Good, very good to see you. Longliners are named after the long, thin line that often stretches 60 miles behind them. There are thousands of hooks spaced at intervals down the line. But each fish has to be reeled in by hand, one at a time. The catch on these local longliners is closely monitored. But the foreign boats seem to play by different rules. How much control, realistically, do you think the Seychelles has over those boats? Do they even ever come into Port Victoria, or do they just stay out there and do what they want? I believe a lot of these boats are, are flagged, are licensed, without even calling in Port Victoria. The observers in the ports will never know what's we'll really never being know. Fished. Exactly, you don't get access to the logbooks to, to know the movements, the catch per day, uh, hooks being set per day, and, and you don't know what's happening. You hear that they, they are uploading uh, in whatever port, and. There, there has to be tons of, of, of illegal activities going on. Commercial fishing boats are always meant to register their catch, to check it conforms with their quotas. But by transshipping their load to another boat, they can escape detection. Their catch gets mixed up with legally caught fish and appears legitimate. This is known as fish laundering, and it costs the global economy billions of dollars a year. Our economies, our livelihoods, and our food all depend on our oceans. Illegal fishing depletes the world's fisheries. Were the longliners from the videos into this sort of racket? Fishing illegally in the Indian Ocean? <laughs> 